Hello, it's Teresa here. Um, I'd like to wish you all a very happy and peaceful 2023. And um, as you can hear, I still have the dreaded Lurgy. This should have been the project in between Christmas Day and the New Year. But unfortunately, as you can hear, things didn't work out that well. Firstly, I'd like to thank you all very much for your lovely, kind messages and comments in our Facebook group. Thank you very much, and I really enjoy seeing your up-to-date work. Please keep it up, because I, although I've been really neglectful of the channel and Facebook, I have a few ideas um, as soon as we break into the new, the, um, new year and um, my health improves got a few ideas that um, I might run past you in the first Facebook group um, so I uh, do hang around and I've, I have a feeling you might like these ideas because some of you have raised this this idea before anyway um, this video um, my voice will be in and out I'm afraid um, it's hurting at the moment I've had to take a video this bit and put it on the front so I'm not going to waste too much time here. I just wanted you to know that um, I do appreciate your comments, your, your wishes for Christmas, and everything else that you've done, and, you, and your support for me, okay? So hopefully 2023 will be a great year for us all. So please, wherever you are, keep safe, and have a really, really peaceful new year. Okay, so on that optimistic note, we'll carry on. Now today's project is going to be from my historical scrapbook folder. We're going to be working from a piece of um, of uh, an artifact, should we say, from the Victorian Albert Museum. Now the folder, I'll start with the folder first. As you can see, it is quite a lengthy folder. It's a bit longer than A4. Now this is an embroidery. Now it's the back of an embroidery. Um, I can't remember how I got this embroidery, if it was through eBay or if it was in a charity shop. I'm not sure now, but I actually preferred the back. This is the wrong side and it is so gorgeous. The texture is lovely. You can just see the misty trees peeping out here and the misty blossoms there and there as well and there's a bridge it's a bit like Monet's garden this little bit here and that is absolutely gorgeous and all I did was put a frame on it we've all done these frames before the frame and some corners in felt so this is what's holding all my bits together that is the right side so when you open up this folder you can see immediately that nice picture there but I still preferred the texture of the other side funnily enough now if I can position this I'm not going to go all the way through I'm just going to flick through to give you an idea about a historical um, folder scrapbook now it doesn't have to be from one of the big city museums it can be from your local museum or a drawer that your local um, library might have it could be absolutely anything that interests you these happen to be from the Victorian Albert Museum over years of study up there and painting and drawing and sketching um, and I've now managed to put them over time into some sort of order well into plastic sleeves anyway sort of things that i i collect and that interests me this is scandinavian carriage cushion free stitchery in walls and that's very very beautiful now some of these that you're looking at might not even be in the museum at the moment they, they might be tucked away somewhere um and not on show so this is um 17th century signed and dated Sarah Thurstone and I just think that's lovely it's from a chinoiserie coverlet but as I said I'm not going to um, stop too much 
this is beautiful as well it's a, a detail from the scion coat from the opus anglicanum period i've touched on that very very briefly i think it dates from the 13th 14th century it's absolutely wonderful now there's an awful lot of cross stitch in here because what I like to do is after I've done something like this, this is red cruel work inspired by 16th century black silk work and that is lovely. But what I like to do after I've done a sketch of this little bit of a painting here, I like to do it in cross stitch. I transfer it through graph paper and cross stitch and it just gives me a feel for it um, it gives me a little bit um, it gives me an idea of the shapes that are going on so that is why there's a lot of cross stitch in here that is my go to um, stitch just to experiment I do love cross stitch and I watch my daughter do it for hours and I do love it and I used to do it until my um, I needed very strong glasses so um, not done so much recently now I hope you can see this this is the chosen design now I will get back to this but I'm just going to show you some more now this is Greek peasant island embroidery and this is a, a, a sleeve from Hungary and I'm just flicking through just so you can get a rough idea of what to keep in your journal, your scrapbook, if you're interested in history and of keeping um, little bits of things like this. And it doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to. It, all it has to be is legible to you. You need to look at your design and understand it. Nobody else needs to do that. For instance, this is um, a sleeve. It's Spanish from 18th century linen embroidered with green silk so you might want to put a few details down there and then we've got a stomacher from the 17th century and I loved this and I actually liked keeping it it was it is colored it's in beautiful silks but once I did the sketch I couldn't bring myself to color that in I thought that was lovely as it was and there's other pieces in here that's um, from Canterbury Cathedral, the Beckett window. I had to do my third year art thesis was on that window and how that applied to English embroidery at the same time, the Opus Anglicanum. But this is, these are all other, other stories. Now I'm going to take you back to our inspiration. I hope you just enjoyed that potted look at uh, my scrapbook here. Now if I can move this so you... I wonder, oh yeah, I wonder if I need the lamp on this. No, 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 no. Right, yeah, so I do hope you can see this. Now, this here is a, the beaded side of a casket. It's 17th century, and that's in the Victorian Museum, like everything else. Now, I did this oh, quite a long time ago. It's looking a bit ancient to me now. I did that and normally I draw them and I, I don't paint them in the museum because um, it, I just feel so self-conscious um, and my drawing isn't very strong anyway so the, the quicker that I can do a sketch and walk away and pretend it wasn't me standing there the better so it's all painted at home and I obviously on my notes I put colours and things so this is our inspiration all beads all beads but I actually like the plant. I actually like this stylized version of a lemon tree, I think. I think that would be a lemon tree. So first step is to just sketch it. Just sketch it, stylized here, beaded. Once again, the beaded side, you can see how this relates to this here. So from that to this, into a graph into the, the graph there and then once again into the embroidery here different counts the backgrounds are different counts i believe this is a 12 count and that tiny one there i think is 18 and you can see the difference exactly the same pattern here or diagram here but on different counts now I think that is yeah that's the last one now from here I went back to this I've gone back to this 
and I've taken two tracings of this okay so two here now the first one it's exact and the tracing paper you can see through it lovely it was quite easy to do that's exact now on this one remember our two words that we work with exaggerate and eliminate I've eliminated this leaf here that leaf there couldn't see the point of that leaf I'm sure um, the artist the designer could but I I don't really want that leaf there now as we go along I might eliminate other things or exaggerate other shapes I've also removed that from there from there that tiny little hill at there I've removed that these will possibly be put back when I'm working it so this is what I've come up with now now this is what I'm going to be working from I spent some time having a think of how I want to work this design I don't want to copy it slavishly I just want to be inspired by it so I decided to do some English quilting I'm just going to pop that out of the way English quilting now because this is a quick quick project I've already decided on the background here and English quilting is a sandwich it's a sandwich of three layers so we have I've got a satin a viscose satin here and it's quite shiny so that's the front then a sandwich in between of wadding the fillings of the wadding and then a little bit of black, black ground oh, sorry background the clock through me then bit of background fabric there now I'm not using interfacing the iron-on interfacing or calico because this is to be quilted I want it soft enough to use I mean sorry to move about I want it to be flexible and the calico and the iron-on violin might just make it too stiff okay as you can see here that hole was a motif that I cut out you can see antennae there <laughs> so this really this was out of the rag bag um, and I'm going to have to avoid that hole you can see the tacking around here all the way around the edge and I've also put it across like that to stop the, the fabric from moving or dancing because it's very very satinized and this against the polyester they tend to dance so that should stop those now let me just undo this so to dress the frame I'm going to put that I need to avoid this the hole there and pop that down there oh, oh that was so difficult to dress I'd underestimated the thickness of the three layers so be warned that um, I'm probably another time I wouldn't cut the fabric until it's actually in the frame and then I will trim around it I've had to actually sew it into the frame so that is now sewn into the frame all the way round which is handy for tightening it up um, I need to take this out at some point but so the frame is dressed the frame is ready I've cut out the tree from here there it is there now I've left this bit here so I'm exaggerating the bottom bit just by making that a little bit longer so I shall pop that there and put a couple of pins in there and here now what if you're going to do it the same way I've done I'm doing mine then just be careful about the color of the tacking thread that you use around here and the color of what you're going to trace your design uh, with because if you use uh, say a bright color or a deep color and I'm thinking of red and black 
then you might mark the fabric so when you move your th your threads you might leave some die marks there so just be a bit mindful of that and with regards to the pen that you use here exactly for the same reason just be careful that your pen mark doesn't come off on your fabric so I've now popped that in place and I only needed three pins there and I'm going to tack a small tacking stitch in all the way around there I've got a nice needle here it's quite a long needle and it's fine and it, it's nice and slim it's actually one of my it's my favorite needle so it's a bit it's a bit battered and it's got a nice long eye here to put the threads through now it needs to be a fine needle to go through the fabric without leaving holes now there's as I've just said I've put the knot in the back I'm only using this sing, um, single and I'm going to start up here um, I'll make this bigger there and I'm just going to do a running stitch all the way around the edge now funnily enough this running stitch is the same stitch or this tacking stitch is the same stitch we're going to use for the English quilting we're going to use running stitch which is just a smaller stitch and then the one I'm doing at the moment now I've done that I'm just going to remove the pins and hopefully you can, you'll be able to see that shape turn that round and make this a little bit smaller so you can see oh let's have a look yes there's the shape there now what I did while I was doing this I took out the tacking thread that was going across there because it, it was just confusing and not only this now this has gone through the three layers it stabilized it this won't walk or dance now because it's all attached the next step is to outline around the shape of the tree in a nice stitch well it's taken quite a while to get to this stage between um, the tacking and the sewing here I've had that awful flu virus this was supposed to be out uh, for after Christmas between New Year's Eve and um, I've just been not silly with it but this is the first time I've actually done anything now for four days and um, so hopefully I'm on the mend now and I have made quite a start on this so fingers crossed that this will be out within the next couple of days now what I have done I actually had to go back to the last frame on my software to see how far I'd got and what my last sentence was so I'm up to speed with that so what I did <clears throat> as I said previously I tacked around the shape here you can see the shapes missing because I tacked around it so attached around that and then I've done a small chain stitch all the way around I've changed the bottom to give the effect of tree roots and I just love that now at the moment I'm thinking of filling this in maybe with related lines maybe with chain stitch or maybe with a variety of stitches just to fill that so in safely. I'm going to um, carry on with this but I'm just going to give you a little refresher for our new people on the chain stitch now for the new people some time ago maybe two going on three years ago uh, first uh, the first or sewn up has made these stitch journals um, and it was quite a new idea then but this is a journal uh, this one let's see I've got room in here I'm not going to go through them there are videos on this but on each page there is somewhere to write to journal and of course as you're making this up you can add your own pages for journaling diarising whatever you want but what I'm going to do now is just show you that cross um, sorry the chain stitch 
pages in each one now I can't remember which one came first one is um, 2021 and the other one is 2020 uh, I skipped 2022 because last year was a bit manic but hopefully I might do another one this year um, I think it's look at these are looking a bit tired now so I might do another one as a journal again right so chain stitch quite easy it's one of the easier ch stitches to do and it does look like a chain as it's called so that is a, a strip a length of chain stitch this is individual chain now the individual chains placed in a round make a daisy stitch a lazy daisy stitch so you can use them this way you can use them individually or like this as lazy daisy and that was the inspiration for the lazy daisy there so that is out of one of these stitch books here is the other one and as I said I can't remember which came first this one might have been the first one actually um, and here we have, have it again um, the lazy daisy and the chain there and how to make the flowers from there uh, let's have a look yes um, that's that's photocopy from a vintage tablecloth and there as well now I think most of you will know how to do chain stitch but as I said I'm aware that we have some really new people and I'm really excited about that and thank you so I'm just going to do a very quick um, demonstration of how to do the chain stitch so a nice knot in the back of your thread and then you bring it from the back through to the front and with your thumb you hold that down and then with the nice needle and your thread you take it back into that hole or at the side I prefer to go at the side but that's up to you now you make the stitch as long or as wide as you want so I'm going to make my stitch about that long so the needle in where I emerged from and then I want it that long thread still under the thumb and it's coming under the, the needle there and I just pull it and then just slowly pull it into shape like that don't pull it too tightly otherwise you'll lose that nice chain and then you just repeat it in back into the oops back into the hole as long as you want it thumb holding the thread thread underneath and then just repeat that just pull it and there you are now to finish that off you would just go in there underneath and tie it off at the back secure it at the back and that would be your chain now to do a single chain all you do is exactly the same as you've done for these so in from the back like that as long as you want there you go and then you finish it there instead of making it longer you finish it there and just secure it off at the back just a couple of times making sure that you've knotted it to secure it and just cut that and that is your single chain okay so no secrets there, quite easy. Um, so back to our design. The original idea, or one that I mentioned a little while ago, was to maybe do some related lines and just follow um, around the outline. I'm trying to avoid actually <laughs> the, sh the, the light. The light's faded. It's what's that time? It's um, twenty past one in the morning. So the light's all a bit wonky. So if I just do this, it might make it easier. So I was just going to follow the lines around here and relate them. Nice related lines, just filling up this this um, space here. But I spent some time looking at it. Not not very long, but enough time to think. No, I don't like that. Don't like that at all. So I've just done a very very 
brief, quick scribble, and that's all it is. Now, if you can see how that fits in there. So that fits in there. And what I actually did was trace through there, was just trace around this shape here to end up with the shape, the outline. And I've broken the shape down, the tree shape, into other shapes. And I am liking this. And it was quite um, a logical way of breaking it up, really. It was just running lines straight the way across here and across there and here. Um, so there wasn't actually much thought in there. It was, it was just a pen and paper exercise. But I like this effect of breaking up that background shape into what will be different stitches. So we'll have one stitch there, we'll have another stitch in that shape there and here and so on and maybe some fabric applique in these shapes here. So it's wisened up the, the amount of techniques and the, the depth of texture that hopefully I'll achieve by doing it this way instead of just doing the related lines which are following the lines round like that. We've done the related lines before. Um, so this is now going to be the inspiration for my progression of an idea. So I've, already, I've progressed now, developed the idea now from this. So this was the basic idea. Now that has progressed into this. It's all about progression of an idea and how that idea, based on inspiration, which is the, the tree, the beaded from the beaded casket, and it's how they marry together and end up as something else. So we're not copying it as usual, we're just being inspired. So I'm now going to spend some time thinking about this. I'm going at this stage I'm going to do it in blue. Um, I fancy a bit of a change from the warm, bright, um, vibrant colours. I fancy doing it in blue. I might incorporate some beads. As you can see here, <laughs> my little circles here um, tells me that they could be beads, could be sequins. I'm just going to start with one area. And I think I might start with a plique, just a small area of a plique. And this suggests a plique there. So I'm going to choose an area, one of these, and start with a plique, just as a starting point. So I need to sort out some fabric and then I'll, um, I'll probably put it in place. And then as soon as I've done that, I'll get back and then see how to work through this. Well, it didn't take me long to change my mind and decide I didn't want to start with a plique, but with some beadwork. Um, as a nod to the the museum piece, which was, ba which was basically um, all beaded. So I'm using a fine needle here with white cotton. I'm going to work in white thread on this particular piece. I'll just make this bigger and um, I'm going to sew the beads on individually just in this little section here. And all that is, is bringing the needle up from the back placing the bead on the needle and then doing like an over sew stitch so it's quite an easy thing to do. So I'm going to carry on with this and as you can hear my throat is actually <laughs> hurting a bit. As soon as I've done a little bit more I'll get back and show you. Now when you come to the end just lose the thread in the back. So that's the first section done here. I'll hold it up and you might be able to see 
some of the beads just glistening and it's got the nice encrusted feel that I'm after on the front of this. Now I'm going to carry on breaking up these areas here as I've done here, um, around here. So the next one I'm going to do will be this big shape here I think. Now I very very lightly with a pencil you might be able to see just put a line in there and I'm going to start here now the stitch I'm going to use on this I think at the moment will be a very very small pinwheel stitch here very very small filling this in and they've got to be very small because that shape there isn't that big so I'm going to make a start on that I might continue without a break filling in other shapes well I didn't have a break and I removed the frame I'm just, I'm just finishing outlining this little part this here this side part here um, I don't know whether I'm going to do it all the way round it's very thick it's very heavy I just felt that I needed something to balance up here all these beads here um, are quite heavy looking and um, I just think they need to be balanced somewhere and I thought perhaps introducing the purple thread just down that little bit of side there might do the job but I'm not sure it has actually I don't think it has I'll pull that up now that's that is as far as I've got here and here and here I've added some black net and I've sewn over the net I'm going to make it bigger now so you can see the detail hopefully um, right there we go so I've done some running stitch here on top of the net there and I've held it in place with little running stitches all the way round here I covered up the green running stitch with black net so the green stitches are actually on um, underneath the net um, and here once again I added the net in that shape there and I've just put some feather stitch all the way down and some French knots and here we have a plique this is all a plique now and some let me move that down and there we go so in this section here we have a plique um, we have some sequins here and that's a little bit of lace there and which has had um, some threads there couched down so you can see the little squares the holes that have actually been couched to the background with some little red uh, back stitches actually there and here that shape there is chock -a block with small pinwheels in a variety of blues and some brown as well and uh, I like that they're not finished now I don't think any of these at the moment are finished but I'm going to move on and um, have another look at this as I progress with the background now I'm going to introduce some English quilting I think at the moment around here around the edges here and this is where I might get the related lines in just around there I'm really not sure I need to spend some time now just having a look to see how I'm going to use this and if I'm going to make any more shapes or if I'm just going to run the quilting along there not sure there's there's an awful lot that I could do either side but what I'm going to do I'm going to add this this lace you've all seen this before it's got the inbuilt <laughs> sparkles on it I'm going to add a little piece of that probably aping that shape there start with that side um, and do the sewing over that mm, yeah I think that's what the first thing I'll do is cover 
this piece of background, or it could be that piece, it doesn't matter, with some lace and then start sewing. I'm not sure if I'd, if I'd actually want that both sides. So I'm going to start with one side and then work out some quilting. Actually, I could quilt the background shapes itself. Oh, there's another option there. If I make this a bit bigger, you might get to see. Can you see the how that would look on the, the background fabric? So anyway, there's quite a lot to think of at the moment. I will spend some time now having a look. Um, coming up with something and then I will probably make a start as well. So the next time you see this, hopefully some of this will be done. Okay. So I'm just finishing the tacking now. I've tacked this side. I decided to do the left side after all. Um, and I've tacked it all the way round. Just along here. And it's will be ready now for a little bit of quilting. I'm going to finish that there. Some hand quilting, which is just, as we mentioned earlier on, it's just very small running stitches or back stitches. You could do either. So there we are. And let me just make that smaller. I have, I'm resting it on the cable to give it a bit more height so you can see it. Um, so that is that side ready. I'm not going to touch this side yet. Not until I've made a bit of a start here. Okay, it's looking a bit peculiar actually, isn't it? It's moving a long way from um, the initial inspiration. Now, I think I might start doing this around the edge here. Um, yeah, I think that's how the way to go. Although I could pick out some of these shapes. Ooh. Yeah, that's a spanner in the works, isn't it? But anyway, I'm going to make a start. Just for the time being, I'm going to stop the quilting here. I've done as much as I want to at the moment. Um, you can see all the little lines around here. I'm not sure how big I'm going to make this. I don't want the whole size. Obviously, I'm going to have to have the length, but the width, I don't want it too wide. So it seems pointless to carry on quilting at the moment until I know how wide I'm going to make it. So that is that is it at the moment. Now, I've moved on a little bit to the next step, even though this isn't finished and the detail in here isn't finished. So the details are going to be left to last. Normally I, I do them at the time, but this this uh, particular instance I'm going to do it differently um, this time because one thing is going to very much have a knock-on effect on the whole thing, um, if that made sense. Now what I have done, I've just gone back to the original painting from the museum and there it is, um, just for reference. And I have my my little piece piece here all traced out with the missing tree. So we know where the tree's gone. But while I was looking at this, I thought I really don't want to replicate it. It is just for inspiration. So I went to my rag bag just to see what was going on there, if there was any inspiration. And I came across these leaves. Now, we've used these leaves before. And I can't remember what we did with them, but look at this. They're already um, interfaced at the back. Now this is why I interface, um, and I've explained it before, I normally interface uh, a motive or a design before I cut it out. Uh, which means that you sometimes end up with lots of pieces like this that you're not going to use. But they're always ready as they are now for another project. So, I like the look of these to take the place of the leaves here. Okay, not sure at the moment what I'm doing with these lemons. I actually think they're oranges, to be honest. Not sure what I'm going to do with these. 
whether I'm going to turn them into flowers even, um, I'm not sure. But for the time being, I'm going to go back to the leaves here and just place these probably where they're placed here. Now as you can see, these are just single leaves here. Um, I, oh, that looks like, I'm not sure whether that's a pair of leaves or if that's just a decorative leaf, a single leaf there, same there. But I've cut these out and I'm going to place these um, on here somewhere. Now I might actually refer back to the original and I've got the other one here that I'm looking at, This, that one there, if you can see part of it. I've got that there that I'm looking at at the moment. Um, let's have a look. So we have a leaf across here which I thought I was going to get rid of. I'm not so sure. So I think the best thing to do is just place the leaves where I feel happy placing them, to be honest. So that could go there. Um, I could have some here. What's I'll that? place the leaves and um, I'll probably pin them in place. Now if we look back at the this one here we can see there are some stems or fine branches connecting some of the leaves to the tree so i'm going to put those in i like those very much so i will put those in there and there and there's another one there but then apart from that i think i'm just going to do what feels what feels good on my piece of work Let's just see what it looks like if I put the leaves there and there. Yeah, I'm going to pop the leaves on and then I should think about whether to, to make these oranges, lemons or flowers. At the moment, I'm thinking of flowers, but we'll see anyway. So I'm just going to carry on and I'll get back as soon as there's something to show you. So I've got as far as sewing the three pairs of leaves on here and I've deliberately left this one so I can show you how I did these. I've used the blanket stitch and I've done it the way that I love doing it, the back to front. Um, I'm just going to make that big. Okay, we'll look at that one. So I've done this, the blanket stitch, back to front and the veins and the stalk um, is with chain stitch. Okay, so these black bits is chain stitch and the green outline edges, black kit stitch. Um, I hope you can understand me because I've actually lost my throat and my, <coughs> excuse me, my voice again. Every time I think this virus is going, it comes back with some sort of vengeance. But anyway, um, I'll keep this short and sweet. Now, I'm going to do this. And as you can see, I've just put a pin in the center. It doesn't need any big stitches to hold it in place. Just one pin is holding it down. So I've come from, oops, I have come from the leaf three strands of embroidery floss with a knot in the back from the um in the end from the back into the leaf pick up piece of the white fabric and then i'm just going to pull it okay now can you see that it's actually the making of a chain there we go, so that's the first one. Now, you make your stitches as long or short. So you space them as you wish to. So I'm just going to repeat that. So, from the back, through the white fabric, and then through the leaf, keeping my thumb over what, as I, what I said looked like a chain. There you go. And already we're getting that nice spiky back to front blanket stitch. There we go. So 
I say back to front because normally we do this the other way round. So the spiky bit is facing inward to the leaf. But I just love this effect. And it leaves itself open to putting French knots along here or beads or weaving. So I'll just carry on and do this all the way round. There, and that's finished. One more stitch to finish it off. That's done. Take the needle through to the back. And then we'll just tie that off. Make a, no a knot so it doesn't come undone. And just cut that. Cut that off. So that is the outline now. Now, the next part is to... Thread the needle once again, another needle, three strands, and I'm using black. Now it's up to you, you, you might want to use totally different colours. A knot in the bottom, and then through the back, and I'm just going to follow the stem line on this these actual leaves. These, the other uh, ones, I've put my own um, stem, uh, sorry, my own veins in here, but this one, I think I might just follow that stem line that's already there, or that vein line, I should say. So, chain stitch in from the back. I'm going to pick up a little bit, and these stitches we've all done before, so I'm going to chain all the way along there once again. There we go, and there, now I'm going to take this black thread up to, I think, I'm going to swing that up here to meet this here, still chain stitch, just going to swing it up there like a small branch. So I'll carry on with the same stitch. So I'm going to swing it round there. Right, I'm coming to the end of this. And I've sewn right the way across the quilting. And I want to come up and match this one here. So a little bit of a turn there. Follow that black thread along. And there we are. So I'm going to finish that off in the back. Not so. What have we got now? We've got this coming right the way round here up to there I won't I won't make this smaller yet otherwise it might make you dizzy I'm just going to carry on now with the vein here I think I'll start it from there chain stitch chain stitch again right I'm starting it there and I will follow the line that is already there. You can see it on the screen. It looks white on the screen. Just a couple of chain stitches. And there we are. And those are now in place. I'm going to make the screen smaller now. There we go. Ah, that's better. So, none of it is quite finished because I'm not sure if I'm going to put beads around the edge here. Um, I'm not sure whether I'm going to make these a bit thicker. I might put beads, French knots here. So it isn't finished yet, but I'm going to carry on. And then I'll look back when I put the basic bits on. Now the next thing that I'm going to put on are the flowers or the fruits, I wasn't sure whether they were oranges or lemons, 
So I'm going to place what I have actually made around here. Now, I've made these. You can see, they're just curls of beads. All I did was put a little bit of glue here, only a tiny bit, to actually tack it in place. And I curled these around until I filled them in. And then I pressed them. I just put something heavy on them for a while and they ended up like this. Now you can do these all sorts of ways. You could do that on some felt. I have some older ones here somewhere. Ah, but not on the table. Or you can actually do this by hand as you're sewing. Um, perhaps I put one there. So you could actually coil that as you go, but by doing it that way and over sewing between the beads, I think it's a little bit difficult. It's quite difficult, especially if you have weak uh, fine motor control, it's quite difficult. So I actually prefer to do it this way or on felt. Now, you can see what I've done this on. I've actually done it on the tracing paper. And I'm just going to peel one off there. So that comes off like that. There it is. A little bit of glue, not too much glue. And then I'm going to work out where to place these. So I think um, I'll make this a little bit bigger. So I might have one there. I think I'll start with four. I've got three here. There's obviously one somewhere on the table. Uh, I need to play around with these just for a little while and place them. Now, I have these dots, these magic dots. They're glue dots, if you see these. And I think I might use the magic dot... You just stick that on the dot and pull it off and then you can use this as some sort of tacking to pop it in place like that and that just holds that firm while you over sew it down so that want to stay there now and I'll carry on with these and as soon as I've placed them I'll get back and I'll show you how I'm going to sew them down now I've held them all down with the glue dots but if you're going to use glue dots or glue just be careful of your nail varnish because if you get the glue dots on your nail varnish it just rips the sheen right off um, I don't care but I know some people pay a lot of money to have their nails done so just a little word of warning there. Now they are in place and I like that arrangement. It is almost, it's a composition that takes your eye all the way round and then back. Okay, so from there, da, 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 and then back. Um, and it also closes it all up and also joins the leaves together as well. Now I'm going to sew these in a white in just an ordinary white thread but if I do that on the demonstration you won't see it so what I'm going to do I found a couple of the the other um, uh, coils that I did and there's one on felt that's on the blue felt and I have one there on red felt now with this red felt one I'm going to do a little demonstration a big uh, I'll enlarge this and just show you how I'm now going to sew these down. So you can just imagine that I'm actually sewing one of these down, but I'm holding it in my hand instead. Okay, so I'm going to make this very big now, just so you can see this. Um, let's, I'll do it here, okay? Right, so... A green thread in here with three strands 
just so you can see it and as I explained I will be doing these in white so what I'll do on these is go from the back through to the front so I'm going to start on the outside and then that will hold the whole lot in place in case the glue dot doesn't hold for very long then the edge will be sewn down and that will hold it down <laughs> that was a long convoluted way of explaining right so I brought the thread up if you can see here I brought it up between two beads and I'm just literally going to over sew over sew there then I'm taking the needle through just that's one that's now secure so I'm going to over sew this one between each pair of beads I'm just going to over sew like that and then take that back now you can do them like that or you could do a little what amounts to a slip stitch and this one this way is much easier so you're just slip stitching between the two and then underneath to the next pair between the two underneath to the next pair okay over sew and then underneath to the next pair and this is all you need to do to hold your beads in place and I will be doing this um, between all the beads I'm not going to skip any because I really want these firmly in place okay so that's just the demonstration piece you can see the back here the sl these are slip stitches here but you can do it how it suits you so I'm going to carry on and do these now slip stitch all these down in place so these are finished I'll make the screen a little bit bigger um, hoping that you can see a bit more of the detail so I sewed them in place um, exactly the same way as I showed you on the demonstration and, and they're quite firm and I don't think they're going anywhere so I'm calling those finished but I'm going to, going to spend some time now just adding maybe a few beads here and there having a look see where I can put some French knots maybe a little bit more stitchery I might do something around the edge of these coils there isn't much more to do so I'm only going to spend a few minutes finishing it off and then I'm going to call it finished I'm just going to run through a few changes that I made or a few additions what I did I've added some more quilting around the outlines here and over here and it's uh, given a more pronounced um, area of raised uh, raised textured and plain smooth so they're our contrast I've also done some under under stitch couching around the leaves um, under the blanket stitch I love doing that it's, it has a lovely effect so all these leaves have been outlined in red thread um, running stitches around the coils here or the curls the fruits or the flowers still not sure what they are so around there now around the stems here I've added some running stitch as well and that's in purple and that purple matches the purple down here okay and round here um, what else round the roots I've done some running stitches round here and then I've squeezed in some herringbone stitches between the running stitch and the edge the chain stitch there and then finally I've added some beads in the pinball stitches uh, sorry the pinwheel stitches here if 
you can hear the texture there. So I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger and pull it down slightly. Right, I think that might be big enough. So there we go. Now you can see it in greater detail. Oh, a little bit bigger. So I'll just pull it up slightly so you can see the detail. I think these work very well. I like the look of those. And I think the running stitch finishes it off. Oh, I added some um, running stitch along there. You can just about see it in brown. That added a little bit more texture and created a quilting effect. Right, now you can see the underside couch in here. Um, where am I? Here. You can see how it's like a mock couching, but it's just under the legs of the blanket stitch and that is all the way around these down here and finally here you can see the beads here in the center of the pinwheels oh and there so not so final there's the herringbone stitch here between the running stitch and the um, chain stitch there so, and the hole is still there. <laughs> the hole is still there. So, I've removed the tagging stitches. I'm going to make this smaller now. Now, at this point, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. I'm not sure what project it will become. So, I'm not making it up into anything at this stage. But I will pop this frame over it so you get an idea. Um, if you can imagine the edges being trimmed off so you can get an idea of how it looks like that without the rough edges it just gives you an idea of how that would look in a picture frame or on the front of something and there we go and I'm quite pleased with that so from the 17th century to the 21st century a design inspired by the stylized tree on a beaded casket so um, don't forget if you're into history to start making a scrapbook a design book you'll be surprised when you can use it now what I didn't say at the beginning was that this is not actual size the actual size on the side of the casket is minuscule. It's tiny. So um, the size has increased quite dramatically. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. And I'm so sorry it didn't go out betwixt, um, between Christmas and the New Year. But hopefully things will get back to normal within a day or two I'll catch up with you all later on Facebook hopefully but uh, meanwhile happy new year and please keep safe and take care okay and um, hopefully the next video will be out quicker than this one so until then I'll see you soon so bye bye